Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my series, Reading Dracula by Bram Stoker. Without further ado, returning to Dracula, as read by Lord Naren White. The whole nine? I asked. Yes. There was five in the first load and four in the second. It was main dry work, and I don't so well remember how I got home. I interrupted him. Were the boxes left in the hall? Yes, it was a big hall, and there was nothing else in it. I made one more attempt to further matters. You didn't have any key? Never used no key nor no think. The old gent, he opened the door himself and shut it again when I drove off. I don't remember the last time. But that was the beer. And you can't remember the number of the house? No, sir. But you needn't have no difficulty about that. It's a iron with a stone front with a bow on it and I steps up to the door. I know them steps. I haven't had to carry the boxes with three loafers. Uh, what come round to earn a copper? The old gents uh, give them shillings and they seen uh, they go so much they wanted more. But he took one of them by the shoulder and was like to throw him down the steps till a lot of them went away cussing. I thought that with this description I could find the house, so having paid my friend for his information, I started off for Piccadilly. I had gained a new painful experience. The Count could, it was evident, handle the earth boxes himself. If so, time was precious. For now that he had achieved a certain amount of distribution, he could, by choosing his own time, complete the task unobserved. At Piccadilly Circus, I discharged my cab and walked westward. Beyond the junior constitutional, I came across the house, described, and was satisfied that this was the next of the layers arranged by Dracula. The house looked as though it had been long untenanted. The windows were encrusted with dust, and the shutters were up. All the framework was black with time, and from the iron the paint had mostly scaled away. It was evident that up to lately there had been a large notice board in front of the balcony. It had been, it had, however, been roughly torn away, the uprights which had supported it still remaining. Behind the rails of the balcony, I saw that there were some loose boards whose raw edges looked white. I would have given a good deal to have been able to see the notice board intact. <sighs> Perhaps I've given some clue to my ownership of the house. I remembered my experience of the investigation and purchase of Carfax, and I could not but feel that I could find the former owner there might be some means of discovering of gaining discovered of gaining access to the house there was at present nothing to be learned from the piccadilly side and nothing could be done so i went around to the back to see if anything could be gathered from this quarter the mews were active the piccadilly houses being mostly in occupation i asked one or two of the grooms and helpers whom I saw around if they could tell me anything about the empty house. One of them said that he heard it had lately been taken, but he couldn't say from whom. He told me, however, that up to very lately there had been a notice board for, of, for sale up, and that perhaps Mitchell, Sons and Candy, the house agents could tell me as something, could tell me something. As he thought, he remembered seeing the name of that firm on the board. I did not wish to seem too eager, or to let my informant know or guess too much. So, thanking himself in the usual manner, I strolled away. It was now growing dusk, and the autumn night was closing in. So I did not lose any time. Having learned the address of Mitchell, sons and candy from a directory at the berkeley i was soon at their office in sackville street the gentleman who saw me it was particularly suave in manner but uncommunicative in equal proportion 
Having once told me that the Piccadilly house, which throughout our interview was called, he called a mansion, was sold, he considered my business as concluded. When I asked who had purchased it, he opened his eyes a thought wider and paused a few seconds before replying. It is sold, sir. Pardon me, I said with equal politeness, but I have a special reason for wishing to know who purchased it. Again, he paused longer and raised his eyebrows still more. It is sold, sir, was again his laconic reply. Surely, I said, you do not mind letting me know so much. But I do mind, he answered. The affairs of their clients are absolutely safe in the hands of Mitchell, Sons, and Candy. That was manifestly a prig of the first water, and there was no arguing with him. I thought I had best meet him on his own ground, so I said, Your clients, sir, are happy in having so resolute a guardian of their confidence. I am myself a professional man. Here I handed him my card. In this instance, I am not prompted by curiosity. I act on the part of Lord Godalming, who wishes to know something of the property which was, he understood, lately for sale. These words put a different complexion on affairs, he said. I would like to oblige you if I could, Mr. Harker, and especially would I like to oblige his lordship. We once carried out a small matter of renting some chambers for him when he was the Honorable Arthur Homewood. If you will, let me have his lordship's address. I will consult the house on the subject and will, in any case, communicate with his lordship by tonight's post. It will be a pleasure if we can so far deviate from our rules as to give the required information to his lordship. I wanted to secure a friend and not make an enemy, so I thanked him, gave the address at Dr. Seward's, and came away. It was now dark. But I was tired and hungry. I got a cup of tea at the aerated bread company and came down to Purfleet by the next train. I found all the others at home. Mina was looking tired and pale, but she made a gallant effort to be bright and cheerful. It wrung my heart to think that I had to keep anything from her and so caused her inquietude. Thank God this will be the last night of her looking on at our conferences and feeling the sting of our not showing our confidence. It took all my courage to hold the wise resolution of keeping her out of our grim task. She seems somehow more reconciled, or the very subject seems to have become repugnant to her, for when any accidental allusion is made, she actually shudders. I am glad we made our resolution in time. As with such a feeling as this, our growing knowledge would be to torture to her. So it would be torture to her. I could not tell the others of the day's discovery till we were alone. So after dinner, followed by a little music to save appearances even amongst ourselves, I took Mina to her room and left her to go to bed. The dear girl was more affectionate with me than ever and clung to me as though she would detain me. But there was to be talked of, and I came away. Thank God the seizing of things that has uh, things has made no difference between us. When I came down again, I had found all others gathered. I found the others all gathered round the fire in the study. In the train, I had written my diary so far, and simply read it off to them as the best means of letting them get abreast of my own information. When I had finished, Van Helsing said, This has been a great day's work, friend Jonathan. Doubtless we are on the track of the missing boxes. If we find them all in that house, then our work is near the end. But if there be some missing, we must search until we find them. Then shall we make our final coup and hunt the wretch to his real death. We all sat silent a while, and all at once Mr. Morris spoke. Say, how are we going to get into that house? We got into the other, answered Lord Godalming quickly. But, Art, this is different. We broke house at Carfax. But we had night 
and a walled park to protect us. It will be a mighty different thing to commit burglary in Piccadilly, either by day or night. I confess I don't see how we are going to get in unless that agency duck can find us a key of some sort. We'll go ahead and stop there. Uh, for this week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care. And thanks again.